Joining us now is uh, Congressman Duncan Hunter of California. We have him on for a lot of different reasons. How are you? Hey, doing great, Sean. Thank you. All right. So you probably know about this particular group, which has come into play here, um, and that is the San Diego La Raza Lawyers Association, because that's where you're from. Um, and you know probably the positions of the controversial National Council of La Raza, of which, by the way, is translated into the race. They're separate groups. The Lawyers Association is not a branch of the National Council of La Raza, but a report on World Net Daily today says they do link to the National Council of La Raza on their website. Does that is that relevant to you? Yeah, that is relevant. I mean, that's, you know, take uh, if, if you had a, a judge that was a member, a member of a white supremacist group that, that thought that or or a Native American supremacist group or anything, um, that that's what La Raza is here in San Diego. They believe that California is theirs, um, that the United States took it wrongly and they're going to get it back one day and they're going to take it back by force if they have to. That's it, what La Raza is. So, yeah, that, that so that's the belief in in. This this notion of the nation of Aslan, in other words, that the southwestern portion of the United States really belongs to Mexico. Correct. OK. And so if, if you would link to that as the San Diego La Raza Lawyers Association, as Jerome Corsi points out, if you link to that on your website, what does that say to you? It, it, it says that you have an affiliation with them. And now but that. You know, I'm, I'm still kind of, I, I don't understand, what, what Trump needs to do here with this, with all of it, he's got to separate his business stuff from his presidential campaign. Um, I, I don't think you can mix the two, and that's that's what he just did. He, he mixed them uh, forever. Yeah, I <laughs> think I would agree said. that that's a mistake. I think you're right on that. I, in other words, and I don't think he went into enough detail in explaining his comment. For example, you know, if the judge in the case appoints people connected to Clinton and a law firm that paid the Clintons you know, six hundred thousand dollars in speeches and donations to the Clinton campaign and have connections to Obama and move on dot org. That's problematic, isn't it? Yeah, that that's a much bigger deal, I, I think. And, and that's probably the real deal here, not not somebody's heritage. But, you know, I, but, but you can look at this multiple ways. Sean. one of the ways, you know, what I like to do is take these arguments out to their to their logical extreme. So let's say that Chris Kyle, the American sniper, is still alive and he was on he was on trial for something. And his judge was a Muslim uh, American of Iraqi descent. And here, here you have Chris Kyle, who's, who's killed a whole bunch of bad guys in I, Iraq. Would, would, would that be a fair trial for Chris Kyle if, if you had that judge there? Probably not. And Chris Kyle could probably say, hey, this guy's not going to like me. But the left has I made this case for a long time that, for example, somebody should have a jury of their peers, and if they happen to be a black American or Hispanic American, that they shouldn't have an all-white jury, correct? Isn't that a right. similar well, argument? At, yeah, you can look at the O.J. trial, too. Was that fair? <laughs> right. You know, so I guess the question is, is probably Donald Trump was, A, inarticulate, B, didn't explain the facts of the case and the reason why he doesn't like this particular judge. And I think he probably made the mistake of, of sort of making this, while it's political, he brought up, the fact that the immigrants, that the judge's parents, he was born in Indiana, he brought up their ethnic background. That was a mistake. Yep. No, that was a mistake, Sean. And I don't have, you know, kind of like Paul Ryan said, I don't have, uh, I'm, I'm making no excuses for Donald Trump here. Just because I endorse him and support him doesn't mean that I support and endorse everything he says. And this is one of those things. Yeah, but why did Paul Ryan say this is the textbook definition of, of being a racist? Why did uh, Lindsey Graham say it's un-American? It seems there's there's almost a group of people in Washington, establishment types, that just want him to lose and want want to help Hillary any way they can. No, and I'll tell you what, too, Sean. This is not going to be the first time, or the, the, excuse me, this won't be the last time. It's obviously not the first time, but it's not going to be the last time that he says something like this either. So either you you support the Republican nominee against the horrible Hillary Clinton, um, or, or or you don't. I I don't know what what game. My my colleagues are playing when they try to slam Donald Trump any chance they they get it, as opposed to just saying, look, that's not my that's not my position. Um, he's he's he said some things we don't agree with, but we're still behind him. Um, I don't know what their game. is. Well, Lindsey Graham sure actually is now a few years for president. Lindsey Graham is now openly urging Republicans to abandon Trump and saying that uh, people will recognize that the time will soon come when, quote, the love of country will trump the hatred of Hillary. So if you love America, according to Lindsey Graham, you need to get over your hatred of Hillary because we'd be better off with her in the White House. Well, that's how I interpret it. What do you? Ta- how do you take it? Yeah, I, I take it that way too. Uh, you know, but I I think you can separate what Trump says to how he will 
act as president and what he will enact as president. I, I trust him to be the next president of the United States. That doesn't mean he's not going to say some dumb things, but I think he will be a great president because he's going to put America first. He's going to focus on the economy, on the on the border, on ISIS. That's what he's going to do. So things like like this, they're on the they're on the periphery. I, I think the uh, the liberals love him because they take the the uh, focus off of the economy and the border and ISIS. The more we we talk about it, I, I think the more fodder that we give the liberals to go after him on stuff that doesn't really matter on how he would be as president. Let's talk a little bit. I mean, you're in the San Diego area. How bad is illegal immigration? How bad does it? impact San Diego. I was in a San Diego office building once reporting on the border. I saw a tunnel that had been dug all the way from Mexico through a San Diego office building. I assume it's impacting your educational system, your criminal justice system, and your health care system in a pretty pretty expensive way, no? And, yeah, and our election system, because now you can get your driver's, when you get your driver's license, you can register to vote at the same time without having to be a citizen. But here's here's the upside to San Diego. We, we have the border fence that Trump always talks about. It, it's here in San Diego. We, it goes from the, the Pacific Ocean to the desert inland. So there is almost no illegal immigration in San Diego. You you do have to build a tunnel for a, a mile and bring it up under some warehouse or something. That's what you have to do to come across the border here. To come across the border in Arizona or Texas, you just got to climb under a fence like the Afghan criminal, the Afghan terrorist did late last, last year. So in San Diego, we don't have a lot of illegal immigration. We have the impacts of illegal immigration on the economy, like you said, the healthcare system, school system, but not the criminal illegal immigration where you have people coming across that are able to just come across immediately because we have the actual we saw that's, that's here we saw the violence that took place in san diego we saw the violence in san jose we see the violence at a lot of these trump rallies i mean you see gangs of, of people mobs now surrounding innocent women and throwing eggs in their faces and chasing men down the block and punching people in the face cold cocking them and it happens again and again and in the case of san jose i know the mayor well, he blamed Donald Trump, but they seem to be a group of, of radicals that are pretty well organized now, and they want to intimidate Trump supporters, and, and they want to start violence with them, and nobody seems to really be talking about it. No, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy, actually, Sean. I mean, these, these are criminals. These are thugs. That's un-American. With what these folks are doing at these rallies, that's un-American. When you, when you try to kill uh, freedom of speech and the freedom to assemble, especially during a political season— you know, you don't see a bunch of Republicans or conservatives beating people up at Bernie Sanders rallies. These these, these guys are just thugs, like like Trump said. And what I say is, uh, he, I, I would welcome them to the one we had the the rally we had here in San Diego because I, I had about a few hundred veterans, including Navy SEALs, Special Forces guys, and U.S. Marines with me. So if if these guys want to want to bring it, they, they can bring it back to San Diego, and we'll let the Marines and SEALs take care of them. Well, I, I, that wouldn't be a bad idea, but I mean, especially people. Look, I felt so bad for a couple of women. One woman got punched. Another woman had an egg. Literally, she was surrounded by a mob, people waving Mexican flags, throwing an egg right in her face. I don't know if you saw that video, but yeah, I mean, yeah. it's gotten pretty violent out there. Where are the police, by the way, in all of these things? They're told to stand down? No, not, not in San Diego. They were great. But in San Jose, I think that they were. I, I think... The Dem- I mean, unfortunately, this is political, right? So you have a Democrat mayor. They they want to see the worst the worst outcome possible at these events, so they can blame Donald Trump. I mean, that's that's their political job, and they're they're putting politics above the safety of the people. And I, and I'll tell you, to have to have people stand by and watch women be disparaged and beaten down like that, you, you would you would think that from the the woman's candidate Hillary Clinton, you you would have had massive outcry from her and other liberals ac- across the country, but they don't care if it's a Republican woman getting beat up or being egged. I, I guess they only care if it's a Democrat woman. That's that's pathetic. What does this tell us about what we you can expect this summer at the conventions? The side. Oh, I think it's going to be crazy, Sean. In fact, I'm gonna I'm probably not going to go. I'm going to watch you to see what's going on there. Uh, I, I think I've got more important things to do than try to get through a bunch of protesters at the convention. This so year. really, so you're going to put it all on my my shoulders. I really appreciate that. Don't worry, I have my sensei coming <laughs> with me for self defense purposes. So we're yeah. pre- we're a pretty good tag team. Although he's got 15 black belts, multiple degrees. I only have one little brown belt that he taught me. So we'll see how I do. Uh, all right. Well, thank you. Appreciate you being with us. I know you're trying to get Staff Sergeant Earl. Uh, Plumley to uh, the Medal of Honor. By the way, that's a special forces soldier in Afghanistan, and he was once considered for the top award, but downgraded to a silver star. How's that going? It's going well. I mean, not not just considered for the Medal of Honor, right? He was he was recommended for the Medal of Honor by the right now the current chief of staff of the Army, 
and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Joe Dunford, who I, I did a couple of tours with. So the, the highest guys recommended him, and the bureaucrats back in, in D.C. stopped this again. So, you know, we have all this, we have a lot of inside information coming out from Special Forces, from the Marine Corps, from Homeland Security, on a lot of the stuff that we work on. This is one of those things where we're just trying to correct a wrong and uh, have the warfighter win and not the bureaucrats in the Department of Defense. Yeah. All right. We appreciate it. Congressman Duncan 